Hey, I'm Alec, and today we're going to talk about nozzles. With FDM 3D printing, the smallest change can make the biggest impact on your 3D print's quality. And one of those easiest changes is changing the nozzle size. So if you're using the relatively accepted industry standard of a 0.4mm nozzle, your parts will have a good balance between quality and speed. However, you can also increase the nozzle size by putting in a different nozzle and be able to print a lot quicker and stronger, but your parts aren't going to be very smooth. Or you can print with a much smaller nozzle size and be able to have smoother and more detailed prints that are just going to take a lot longer than normal. So let's look into some of the different materials, different sizes, and why there's just so many different nozzles and how they can best be used. Most 3D printers come with a brass nozzle, and there's a reason for that. Brass is very thermally conductive, which means it transfers heat from your heater block into the nozzle into your filament a lot quicker than other materials might. However, brass does have its drawbacks. Brass is a very soft metal, which means that if you ram into the bed or you start printing with abrasives, you're going to wear down the nozzle. Whether it's closing off the hole or expanding it to an unusable size, there is a place for brass. Stainless steel is another material you're going to see in nozzles, and while it is wear resistant, so it will be able to hold up against abrasives better than brass, it's still not the best at that ability. What it is good at is avoiding having filaments covering the nozzle, making it just, you know, look ugly. So it'll stay cleaner a lot longer than other nozzles might. Next step up in wear resistance from stainless steel is hardened steel, and that's just steel that's been specially treated in order to be very wear resistant to the point that if you treat this nozzle right, it shouldn't wear down for a year, a couple years. It is a great material for a nozzle if you're going to be printing something like Nylon X all day long. The pinnacle of wear resistant nozzles is the Olsen Ruby. Now this is a nozzle that was designed to be brass, so it is very thermally conductive, except the tip of it has a small ruby in it, which means that it won't wear down. It just is completely abrasive resistant against Nylon X against carbon fiber, Kevlar, whatever you can throw at it, it's basically indestructible. Of course, that doesn't cover all of the different materials. There are specialty ones like nickel plated copper, which means that copper is more thermally conductive than brass, so it will take on heat a lot easier. Or there's some other different plated versions. There's a lot of different sort of makeups that you can get for a nozzle, and they all serve a specific purpose. So while there are a lot of different materials that your nozzles can be made of, you can also vary in the diameter of the orifice. So there are some that are 0.5 millimeters, 0 0.35, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.1.0, 1.2. .1 There's so many different sizes and they all serve relatively different purposes. And it takes a little bit of time to figure out what each one's best for. For comparison's sake, I've printed four different fills with four different nozzle sizes with everything else being the same with them. So they have 10% infill each, two perimeters, and a layer height roughly half of the nozzle diameter. On the left, we have the 0.25 millimeter nozzle fill, and this was printed at a 0.15 millimeter layer height. Now, he does look a little translucent compared to the rest, and that's because at 0.25 millimeter nozzle, two perimeters is just a little over one perimeter for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So it does mean that if you're printing parts, you may need more perimeters in order to get the same sort of look across the parts. Now 025 millimeter nozzle is really good if you're printing tabletop miniatures or jewelry, but you wouldn't want to print anything like this leapfrog or fill because it would take an eternity to get those to go th th that well. Next to that you have the 0.4 millimeter fill with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now this is a fairly standard quality in terms of 3D prints. You can get really nice cosplay or engineer parts that serve a purpose really well, and they take a good amount of time at about five hours, but it's certainly quicker than 10 hours, but it's also not as strong as the bigger nozzles can be. So the 0.6 millimeter nozzle fill was printed at a 0.3 millimeter layer height, and you can already see that he's really starting to get that 3D printed texture look. Even from afar, you can see that he's got print lines, some of the details are getting a little fuzzy, a little wonky, but this one printed in about three hours instead of the five like the previous one, and it got quite a bit heavier because of it too. This fill also feels like a rock, whereas the other one just feels like a pretty normal 3D print. Next we have the 0.8mm nozzle fill, 
which printed in about two hours and has a 0.4 millimeter layer height. Now this one is feels like it's almost rock solid, but it's only 10% infill. And you've very clearly lost a lot of the major details that were modeled into fill. However, it is incredibly strong. And if you're trying to print a part that you intend to face a lot of stress, the bigger the nozzle size, the more stress it can take just because there's more surface area between each layer. So you get a lot better adhesion. Now, if you go any bigger with the nozzle, you're gonna need to upgrade your hot end system. So if you have say an E3D V6, you will need to upgrade to the Volcano which just means that it's changing the way the heater block and heater cartridge are oriented to better melt filament within the nozzle. And on top of that, the nozzle is also lengthened, so there is a longer melt zone for the filament to get malleable and extrude out of the nozzle, because some of those nozzles can be from 1.0 millimeters or 1.2 millimeters, like this leapfrog or this fill. At that point, the layer lines are incredibly obvious, but these were printed incredibly fast as well. So if you're not looking for a part that needs any sort of aesthetic look to it in terms of smoothness, but you really like a textured 3D print line look on your parts, a 1.2 millimeter nozzle means they'll go fast and they'll have that look. And that about covers it. So whether you want to use a different material in order to be able to print abrasives like a hardened steel or an Olsen Ruby, or you want to be able to print smaller, more detailed parts or bigger parts faster, being able to change your nozzle really opens up the possibilities for what your 3D printer can do. Personally, I like to use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle for my cosplay or desk prints, whatever I have on there, or I'll use a 1.2 millimeter volcano nozzle for something that I really wanna show off as 3D printed. Now I'd love to hear what you guys use on your 3D printers for different nozzle sizes, different materials, and for that, leave it in the comments down below. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.